This is the uh, Sonosite Behind the Skin webinar called Using Ultrasound to Evaluate the Medial Ankle. And this is the third and a four-part series about ankle ultrasound. And we'd love it if you could join us uh, on Tuesday, October 11th for the final webinar, Using Ultrasound to Evaluate the Lateral Ankle. Uh, with that out of the way, I'll get uh, today's presentation started. Uh, my name is Chris Pennell, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Uh, before we begin, please be advised all attendees are muted. And you can type your questions into the Q&A box under the, in the toolbar located at the bottom of the side of your screen, and we'll conduct a Q&A session at the end of the presentation and demonstration. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and archived for future reference on our webinars page. Uh, so here with us today, we have Daniel Shelton. Uh, Daniel is the Director of Musculoskeletal Market Development for Fujifilm Sonosite. Uh, Daniel has spent 18 years as a dedicated musculoskeletal sonographer, and 12 of those years have been here at Sonosite. Uh, he now leads musculoskeletal market development, where he works to spread the word about the benefits of point-of-care ultrasound. Uh, today's webinar is going to be a very thorough examination of the medial ankle, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to Daniel and get started. Thank you, Chris, for that introduction. And um, I'm just gonna jump right into the slides because we have a lot to cover. Um, just to reiterate, the AIUM indications that we have gone over in the previous webinars are listed here, and I won't exhaust the list uh, verbally again. And then we're gonna cover the medial ankle protocol set forth by the AIUM. It includes the posterior tibialis tendon, flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, tendon, uh, the tibial nerve, and the deltoid ligament complex. So let's talk about this medial ankle joint as we do uh, all these other structures. Start at the joint level, start on the bones, and we're going to work our way superficially. Uh, that's the best way to navigate anything in MSK ultrasound because our bones are our roadmap and they don't change. So um, for the most part, I should say. But soft tissue changes, and that's why it's really tough on especially medial ankle when there's pathology to, to start superficially and work your way down because in normal cases it, it's gonna look okay, it's fine. But when you're really trying to traverse difficult terrain, uh, when soft tissues are disrupted, ruptured, swollen, have calcium deposits where they don't belong, um, things aren't moving uh, the way they should, really you have to start with your roadmap and that's the bones. So let's start with the cortical landmarks first of the tibia. Uh, the fibula won't be a part of this exam, uh, but uh, the talus is a big part of the exam. So the tibia and the talus are a huge part of the exam. Um, the calcaneus and navicular are kind of secondary uh, to, to the majority of the exam, but the star of the show by far is the tibia and how the talus is secured to it, along with how the ca calcaneus and the navicular have their contributions um, to, this, to this ankle joint. So let's start with the medial ankle ligaments. And I will say this in advance, these are the most challenging parts of the whole medial ankle. So if you can get through the, the complex anatomy or at least have a general understanding that these ligaments run in a particular orientation and you have to have the ankle positioned in a particular way to visualize them, I think you'll have a great time uh, learning and navigating these medial ankle ligaments. Uh, first and foremost, the deltoid ligament complex is a complex. Uh, it is shaped like a delta or a triangle, and that's why we think of it that way. It has nothing to do with, you know, delta as a number or anything like that, but this is a large triangular ligament complex. And deep, uh, we, we have two ligaments. They have a similar name, so it's easy to remember. There is a posterior tibio talar ligament and an anterior tibio-talar ligament. So just remember those two, there's a posterior and an anterior. Uh, we never hardly focus so much on this anterior guy, but the posterior one is, is much easier to visualize um, as long as you've got the foot in the right spot. And uh, just know that from a stabilization standpoint, these two guys are definitely keeping the joint from um, everting or, or opening too much and that's very clear and you can see that with the anatomy here but here's our two ligaments we're going to focus on and then the superficial structures to come. Uh, the first superficial ligament it just parallels the deep posterior tibiotalar and that is the superficial tibiotalar so easy to remember uh, they are a complex uh, unless there's something wrong with them I will say you will not discern much of a difference between these layers you can try to move and mobilize the ankle joint. You might see some differences in the layers there, but 
I will say don't get frustrated if you don't see a clear delineation between the two. Um, a lot of anatomical references don't uh, focus on this anyways. They don't really even cite this ligament. It, it, it's potentially a little bit variant, but it does blend into its neighbor uh, very easily, and, it, and its neighbor kind of steals the show. But um, let's take a look at what this looks like on ultrasound. Here's our transducer position. Here's the ligament here. Um, you won't see this with a relaxed ankle. With a relaxed ankle, uh, this ligament is tucked and, and is hiding under the medial malleolus and you won't see it. So we need pretty exaggerated dorsiflexion. Uh, keep part of your transducer planted on the medial malleolus and just keep an eye for the talus to do all the mobilization. You should see that uh, talo, uh, that subtalar joint right here um, swing into view just as a landmark in the FHL back here. We're not gonna focus on the soft tissues just yet, but here's your cortical references. Here's the superficial and the deep. Uh, they do blend together, as you can see here. We're just talking differences in anisotropic artifact between these two. Uh, they are a, a complex, so don't get too hung up on saying here's deep, here's superficial. Just here's your pro position, here's dorsiflexion to find them, and in the live study, uh, live scan today, we're, we're going to go over that really nicely. Its neighbor kind of steals the show. It's the strongest ligament. This is the tibiocalcaneal. It is uh, larger and broader. Um, it is it is thick and dense. It does show up nicely with anisotropic artifact, but again, it's a part of this complex. So if there's nothing wrong with the ankle ligaments that you're ultrasounding, uh, you're not going to see this huge delineation between the layers. But here's what it looks like on ultrasound. So here's our tibia, here's our calcaneus, here's the talus here, so it abridges that gap. Here's an anisotropic or oblique uh, deep tibial tailor uh, ligament just um, so we're, we're running our transducer slightly more anterior than we began we are a bit more mid coronal uh, in the shot here so focusing on our cortical landmarks first you're going to plant the proximal aspect of the transducer and swing uh, the distal aspect until you see the calcaneus uh, specifically around that sustenaculum talli portion of the calcaneus um, its neighbor here is now the tibio spring this is where it gets a little bit more complicated uh, down here, joining the calcaneus to the navicular is the spring ligament complex. It's not the star of the show today. It's not the deltoid complex that we're here talking about, and it's not a part of the AIUM protocol uh, to evaluate the spring ligament with any level of detail. But we do need to know about the spring ligament because this is the only ligament in the ankle that has a, uh, a bony origin but a ligamentous insertion. So it inserts on the spring ligament. So this is the tibio spring ligament. So spring lim ligament acts as a hammock for the talus. And it, and it has these fibers um, that, that literally act as a hammock and hold the talus in position, creating this, this very secure archway or underneath um, hammock, I guess is really the only way to describe it. But superficial to this, and blending and merging and interdigitating with this is the tibio spring. It's very long. It goes all the way down here to the undersurface of um, the articular cartilage surface of the talus. So anytime we see the talus and then we see the cartilage, if you see the cartilage, the immediate superficial surface to that cartilage um, is most likely part of the tibio spring in an oblique fashion, depending on how you have your transducer situated. But spring ligament, it's going to go from that sustenaculum talli region of the calcaneus, the, the inferior, more um, anterior portion of it, to the navicular. And then it also has branches that kind of go on the superior, uh, superficial surface of the navicular, but mostly it also acts as a hammock uh, in its insertion across the undersurface of the navicular. So it's a, it's a big, broad ligament underneath the talus, and then this tibio spring ligament attaches to its fibers kind of mid hammock. So here's the probe orientation. We're, um, we're aiming from the arch of the foot up. So superior um, lateral, I guess, would be the, ang the angle. So the probe is, is laying inferior medial, aiming superior lateral. Uh, we're, we're then gonna fan the transducer uh, tail or the handle of the probe up and down until we see these landmarks come into play. If you see that talus cartilage, you're, you're really, really close. Uh, then I need you to fan your um, distal portion of the transducer here until we see the navicular, the more superficial guy, 
And then deep, we're going to see the calcaneus in the sustenacular tali, the calcaneus, show itself. And just as a landmark, here's the flexor digitorum longus sitting on top of it. And then as another landmark up here to the navicular side, we can see an oblique posterior tibial tendon, which we'll get into um, after we get, get out of these ligaments. But here's the talus. Uh, here's that spring ligament complex. It's all of this. Even though we see one really nice cord of fibers coming into play, this is all still part of that ligament complex underneath. So it's just not what we're focusing on here. We, we see that really nice central cord uh, bridging these two uh, bones. And then we need to keep in mind that that tibio spring ligament is now coming at us. So we're seeing a cross section of the tibio spring ligament here. So we're going to rotate our transducer and we'll do that in the live study. And now we have a cross section of the, t of the spring ligament, which is here. And then we have that interdigitated tibio spring ligament. So here's tibia, here's the neck of the talus. And then incidentally, um, actually what we're seeing here is a bit of the tibio navicular ligament superficially and a bit of the tibio talar ligament anteriorly, the deep tibio talar. So we're not focusing on those, but that is what's sandwiching the tibio spring. So in this particular slide, we're, we're, we're going to windshield wiper the distal aspect of the probe. We're going to plant the tibia side of the probe. And we're going to swing it across until we see um, navicular superficially. And then we're going to swing it back until we see the calcaneus deep. And then we're going to split the difference between those two and do a dynamic maneuver next. So here's that slide. So here's superficial navicular. And then here's the deep portion as we slide back across to the calcaneus, sustenaculum talia, the calcaneus comes into play. And then we're going to split the difference between those two and rest our transducer right there in the middle. And then we're going to do this dynamic maneuver. So we're going to invert the foot. And what that's going to do is kind of try to clap the calcaneus and the navicular together. So I want you to grab the distal foot um, and, and, and pull it inward towards the arch and towards the calcaneus and try to get these two bones to touch. And that's going to relax the tightness of the spring ligament a little bit, enough to cause it to, um, to stretch and to uh, contract here um, on the tibio spring side. So I'm going to hit play and I want you to watch this central band right here. So here's the, here's the spring ligament complex hugging the cartilage. Here's some inferior fibers of the, of the um, posterior tibialis tendon uh, and they're anisotropic. So you can see this interface when we start inverting the foot. You'll see a glide here, but particularly I want you to watch this structure here bounce on top of the deep tibio talar ligament and underneath the tibio navicular uh, oblique segment here, which we're not focusing on. We're focusing on this central portion going to the tibio spring uh, complex right here. So spring complex tibia follow these fibers when we invert and that's what we're seeing here so watch that bounce right here as it relaxes and stretches relaxes and stretches and you can see these fibers and how they're connected and and the beauty of ultrasound is that we have the ability to make these tissues move and sometimes that's the only time you can delineate structures even on MRI there's lots of notes in the radiology references about how some of these ligaments you really can't distinguish one from the other. And that's the same with ultrasound in a lot of cases on a static image. If, if there's no pathology, they don't, they don't make themselves very discernible. Um, but I will say ultrasound has the advantage in that we get to make the tissues move and those movements can oppose the surrounding tissues. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the bulk of the navicular um, shadow over here pushing that posterior tibialis tendon and the tibio navicular ligament complex all of this up here is, is moving separate from the spring so we can see the spring ligament we're relatively cross-section to the spring ligament here and you can see that insertion um, to the spring complex of the tibio spring so tibio spring sandwiched between these two other ligaments that are not the star of the slide here um, but that's one way a very useful way to evaluate tibio spring if it's something that you're working on Next is the tibio navicular. So this one is, I would say, the more challenging of the deltoid ligament complex to see because it's so thin. Um, I typically don't focus on it. I, I will admit I sometimes even skip it if I don't have anything to look at in that area. I'm basically windshield wipering all the way across uh, this, this portion and doing those dynamic maneuvers. And if I don't notice anything anterior to that tibio spring area, then um, I, I really don't go much further anterior if there's no reason to but um, just for the sake of being thorough let's go ahead and show you what that looks like on the slides 
So if you did see uh, tibial spring in the last slide and you did see the shadow of the navicular starting to come into play, we were already climbing into the tibio navicular uh, portion, which is extremely thin, hard to see, and you can rock your transducer around and get this fat to move on top. That's one way to kind of see what the superficial aspect of it might look like. And then deep to that, you know, we're, we're invading that tibio uh, talar, deep tibio talar ligament area here on the talus. So that's one way um, to kind of find out what's on top and bottom of it. But I don't, I don't take an incredible amount of time looking for this one. If there's nothing wrong in the area, there's really nothing to uh, stop and beat your head over uh, uh, about. So uh, just kind of move along what looks like a fascial plane abridging the tibia to the navicular. And then the most anterior one, uh, which we had covered earlier when we were sweeping through, uh, was the tibiotalar ligament, and we'll cover it further in the live demo for the sake of time. So with that, I'm going to switch over to the studio and get us set up for the live demo. All right, so we'll start with the live uh, demo, but before we get started, I want to discuss the transducer options here. Um, the main transducer we're probably going to the most is the L15 to 4. That is a 15 megahertz to 4 megahertz range. We're very shallow, but the the length of the transducer is very handy with the long axis of these tendons and um, and even the ankle ligaments in some areas like the anterior tibio-navicular uh, portion is particularly long. So um, the long footprint is very advantageous here in some cases. Um, other cases, we're going to get around the bonier malleolus by switching over to the L19 to 5 uh, transducer. So that's a 19 megahertz um, top end frequency, but its small footprint is very advantageous around the malleolus. And uh, we uh, typically run out of gel contact right here around that, um, that part right at the malleolus. So I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about. There's typically an air gap with the larger linear array transducer. So when we do that, here we get a big air gap around the malleolus, and instead of always filling in with more gel, switching over to the smaller footprint uh, 19 to 5 megahertz transducers is very nice. And then I like the traditional handle of the 19 to 5 uh, rather than a hockey stick for long to short axis scanning. Very easy to segue back and forth for diagnostic and uh, interventional procedures. But we'll start with the 15 to 4, which is what's hooked up. I'm going to grab some ultrasound gel here and we'll get started. We're going to work our way from deep uh, to superficial just like in the PowerPoint. So again we're going to start on the bony landmarks and then the ligament evaluation working our way up to the tendons and then the neurovascular structures. So I like to wrap my arm around the cord and get a lot of this cord out of the way. Um, I do palpate the malleolus while I scan a lot of these. I'm going to keep the left side of the screen anterior just to keep it consistent with the slides and um, I like to start on the back side of the malleolus in a relative cross section. All right so left side of the screen let me get my arrow up and going. We've got the medial malleolus. Okay let's fall off that and look for the next cortical landmark posterior to the medial malleolus. Here's the talus. So as I, as I swept um, and windshield wipered the transducer proximally more axial that is just tibia so this is all tibia and then as I go distally 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 let's fall off of the the medial malleolus of the tibia the next bone here is the talus and then if I keep climbing distally we'll encounter another joint back here and then the neck of the calcaneus just to give you an idea that was all axial scanning there and if I go long axis scanning on the tibia I see um, the distal portion of the tibia the medial malleolus of the tibia, and then if I fall off, there we go. Um, here's talus again, so tibio, talar, and then there's a joint that we see here, and then we start to see the uh, calcaneus come in. And if I sweep the probe this way now, uh, distal side of the probe, uh, right side of the screen, more posterior, we elongate that neck of the calcaneus again as another reference point. So just kind of getting those, those bony joints um, Road mapped out, let's go anterior with this just a little bit. So as, as we looked at the ligaments on the anterior side, uh, anterior superficial deltoid, which would be the tibio tailor, here's our um, distal malleolus again. And then you can see where that bony interface causes the air gap there. So we're going to add a bead of gel right there where I saw my transducer let up pressure, which is another tip you can do if you don't 
see all of your scanning landmarks while you're scanning because of an air gap like that you can give it a little bit of pressure on the sides that you are getting image and then when you let up you're left with this rectangle and that'll be a good spot to lay down a bead of gel right on the rectangle that way you end up with um, a really nice gel standoff like we have here so medial malleolus uh, anterior uh, talus with a little bit of the cartilage and then the navicular starts over that's probably the medial most uh, cuneiform there. Um, navicular would be just a bit more medial. There we go. So talus, navicular, just to introduce those bones um, as we scan. So now that we have the, the bones oriented, especially the talus, that's gonna be a big landmark here. You can see that big cartilaginous interface of the of the talus is articulating surface with the navicular here um, we'll climb back up on the medial malleolus and start scanning some of these ligaments i think this first ligament is the easiest one to scan it's a deep deltoid ligament it is posterior when the ankle is relaxed like this it's difficult to see the ligaments tucked up under the malleolus and it's very hard to see so we're going to fall off the medial malleolus just enough to where i start seeing that shadow and then i've got the talus in orientation here and what i'm going to do is just have our patient dorsiflex and that brings that deeper deltoid ligament out so this is our uh, posterior uh, tibio calcaneal or sorry tibio tailor ligament and it is a deep ligament here and then keeping that same dorsiflexion going i'm just going to pivot all the way around until i see the anterior let's go ahead and um, drop the front of the foot until we see that deep deltoid ligament of the anterior um, tibio tailor ligament. And so I should see a little bit of a portion of the, the anterior tailor cartilage like we did on the anterior ankle where we saw the ATFL. Well, this will be the anterior um, tibio Taylor right here so we can see that deep ligament here I'm just going to stress the ankle just a little bit more just to see that deeper deltoid shadow right where my arrow is there right under there and actually what I'm going to do is push down with my palm you can see my palm down here on the on the foot and provide just a little bit of stress so there I'm just kind of pushing down and what I want to do is show these soft tissues up here some of this is fat there we go and uh, I'm trying to find and delineate that shadow of that deeper ligament layer right here. So this deep shadow diving is an anisotropic shadow of that anterior tibio tailor ligament. Here's the cartilage of the talus. Nothing's attaching there. And then there's a little bump, little tubercle there. And that would be where it inserts. So that takes care of the deep layers of the deltoid ligament. Let's go to the superficial layers. So back up to the medial malleolus, relatively posterior. It's not going to be superficial to that first easy ligament, uh, not necessarily, but we're going to follow it and use it as a roadmap. So here's our medial malleolus, here's our talus. Now we're looking for the portion that jumps over the talus to the calcaneus portion. So this is the sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus. And just to check our work on that, it looks like another medial malleolus. That's one, one way to kind of distinguish it. Number two, we'll get to the FHL, the flexor hallucis, as long as it sits on this neck. And I'm just going to wiggle the big toe. So when I see that landmark right here, um, I know to abridge these two, so medial malleolus, sustenaculum talli, and we should get that superficial tibial calcaneus, or, or sorry, tibial calcaneal portion of the superficial deltoid complex here. Really nice fibers. Sometimes inverting, dorsiflexion, just to delineate these layers. So what I'm gonna do is use my hand over here, and I just wanna see this layer move relative to the tissues around it, not much. Again, there's not anything wrong with this ankle um, and its ligaments, so we're not gonna find a lot of distinguishing layers until there's actually acute injury or even chronic injury. Um, let's move on to the, um, let's introduce the spring ligament really quick because it is our, our landmark for the tibio spring. So if I'm scanning posteriorly here, and I find that sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus right there. So you can see that big bony neck on the uh, calcaneus portion. 
And what I'm going to do is plant that portion of my transducer. Okay, so that is the uh, smooth side of the transducer or the, the right side of the screen. I'm going to plant that part. And now I'm going to I'm going to windshield wiper and swing the um, dot side of the probe, which is this part here with the orientation marker. We're going to drop that down, and we should see um, there we go. See the cartilage of the talus. That's one landmark. We're almost there. So here's the cartilage of the talus, and I'm going to fall down just another bony landmark, and that should be the navicular. And so here's the navicular. Here's the sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus, and that's where we start to see this ligament complex creating this nice hammock. It's an upside down hammock, basically. So it's not supporting the structure superficial to it as much as it is holding um, with, you know, if the, if, if the foot were load bearing, this um, Taylor cartilage, this whole interface would be pushing down on the spring ligament here. And the spring ligament's very important to go ahead and map out because superficial to that, there's a ligament complex attaching to it in transverse. So we see this transverse kind of oval egg looking structure, and that is the tibio, uh, tibio spring ligament portion of the superficial deltoid complex. And we're going to trace that proximally up to the malleolus in long axis. So I'm going to spin this transducer around this ligament portion. It's the only, um, the tibio spring is the only ligament portion that attaches to a ligament instead of a bone in this part of the ankle. So let's follow that anisotropic shadow. So just superficial to it as a landmark is the PTT, that posterior tibialis tendon that we'll get to. Underneath that, that really dense um, anisotropic area here is the tibio spring as it heads up towards the medial malleolus. There we go. So here you can see the fibers very, very shallow. Some of them are diving and fanning out. It is a pretty broad ligament and, and you can start to see them attaching into this, this complex. All this area here is that complex that we just looked at. The cartilage of the, the talus down here being another good landmark. So tibial spring ligament here, PTT or tibialis posterior right here. So there they are just bordering each other. And then the next one, the most difficult one to scan, and I honestly don't spend hardly any time looking for this one unless there's an injury here. So if we don't see it with confidence here today, don't, uh, don't stress too much about it. Um, but we're going to go to the anterior part of the medial malleolus. Okay, we're going to bridge all that gel over to the navicular. So we see the navicular here and the talus here. And what I'm looking for are, and I'm pushing down and, uh, with my palm. So I'm going to push down and stretch this ligament as much as I can. And one of my goals here is to distinguish uh, tissue movement, stationary tissues to tissues that are moving while I scan. So um, it's just another tool in your toolbox to add dynamic maneuvers and try to try to get these tissues to move across each other. And when in doubt, just keep adding gel and the image just gets better and better and better, right? Um, all right, so medial malleolus following the superficial fibers. So this is the tibialis posterior tendon. So I've gone too far posterior. Now I'm going to move anterior to that. So right there on that anterior kind of facet of the medial malleolus. Once I see some anechoic um, anisotropic fibers trying to attach there, I'm going to windshield wiper the distal portion up and over this talus neck as much as I can to the navicular portion until I see some fibers distinguish themselves. And there's no injury here. Again, it's, it's hard to see this particular ligament. And most of the references out there just kind of skip over it in their ultrasound exam. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't just hop right out at you. But here you can see the connective tissues moving over this cartilage of the, the talus. So watch this band as it hugs the talus and slides up and over the cartilage portion over to the navicular. We're going to look at the tissue movement here when I push down on that first metatarsal right there. So that is about as good amount of movement as I can get the ligament to show itself. It's just not super thick. It is more broad than thick, which leads me to tell you it's much more um, easy to discern each of the ligament layers from the anterior most surface of the medial malleolus right up here. We'll follow the shadow right here. So we're cross-section to the medial malleolus, and we're going to fall off the medial malleolus distally. So medial malleolus, let's fall off of it, and let's use the anisotropic shadows 
of the deltoid ligament complex to our advantage. So I'm just teetering the, the probe uh, distal proximal, distal proximal in probably half a centimeter increments. And I'm looking for uh, volume loss, I'm looking for herniating tissues, I'm looking for the anisotropic artifact that we see here of the deeper portion of the deltoid complex and the superficial portion of the deltoid complex um, to discern which is which. Here's the anterior part of the medial malleolus, so that would be the tibio-navicular portion. The middle section, we're going to fall down into tibio spring right in here, and then the posterior portion of that is that bigger tibial calcaneal portion, which is the biggest, uh, strongest one, easiest to see. And then the deeper layers under here show up better when we have dorsiflexion. So if I had our patient dorsiflex, those will tighten up and they're almost relatively horizontal to the back side of the ankle um, anyways, which I've got my transducer flipped from earlier there. So way easier to see that posterior uh, tibio tailor in dorsiflexion and the anterior tibial tailor in um, plantar flexion there. But it's this whole complex, stay hugged around the medial malleolus, scanning like this, and then also check in cross-section as often as you can. So we'll start now on the tendons of uh, the medial ankle and get back to the life scan. All right, so here we are back to the slides. Uh, medial ankle tendons are next, and, and thankfully I will say this is easier. Um, the deltoid ligament complex is the most difficult thing. Um, sorry to throw you into that head first, but anytime you're scanning something new in musculoskeletal ultrasound, you should work your way from the bones and work your way superficially into these soft tissues. Um, these are the most variable items that you're going to scan are the superficial soft tissue structures like ligaments, like tendons, tenosynovitis, synovial sheaths, and, uh, and the surrounding fat. So let's, um, let's dive into the tendons, much easier to look at. Um, when you are scanning these, if you start at the malleolar level in cross section, they all line up very nicely. And I mentioned that in the last webinar and, uh, and, and, um, and the anterior ankle in particular, that if we're scanning all of these crazy tendons in the ankle and you start in your cross section and, and at the mid malleolar level, it's very simple to, to just pan your transducer distal proximal, distal proximal, and see these structures stay in the center of the screen before they start going off their various directions. So um, we're going to focus on the medial malleolus first and then work our way posteriorly out into these soft tissues. So this is the tibialis posterior, also called the posterior tibialis tendon. In all the references, you'll see it called the PTT. So that is the uh, posterior tibialis tendon bordering it in parallel uh, at the malleolar level is the flexor digitorum longus. It has a longest way to go. Um, it does actually traverse uh, this, this canal under here, um, some soft tissue landmarks that we'll talk about called the knot of Henry uh, before it takes uh, its immediate turn out to the digits in the um, bottom of the foot but it does run in parallel to the uh, posterior tibialis tendon at the malleolar level. And then from there, it's easy to trace. It does have a more distal musculotendinous junction than the posterior tibialis tendon, so that's also helpful. And then its neighbor, just immediately posterior and relatively parallel at the malleolar level is the uh, flexor hallucis longus tendon. And as I mentioned before, anything um, with the word hallucis means big toe. So this is the flexor for the big toe. And uh, it does have the most distal musculotendinous junction. And if you're dealing with an athlete or a runner, uh, don't be surprised if you see that uh, muscle coming all the way down into that tarsal tunnel area causing some issues. Some overdevelopment might cause crowding, tenosynovitis, swelling, ganglions uh, may also cause crowding in this area. And so you can end up with some FHL tendon sheath issues as it has its own tunnel um, here. And we'll show that on, on one of the slides, but flexor hallucis longus is this guy here. Um, also called, uh, and I didn't put this in the slide and I should, but a way to remember this from medial or malleolar level and posterior would be Tom, Dick, and Harry. So that, that's one way people remember this. Not a subject of today. It's just something else that your transducer is going to lay across. So if your probe is over here at the malleolar level and you're slicing the ankle transversely, 
Um, there are our subjects here on the left side of your screen typically, but the right side of your image is just going to be all this wavy soft tissue stuff, and that's typically Kager's fat pad. And then you might see an anisotropic oval on the far side of your screen, and that's uh, the Achilles tendon. So just be aware of that. It's not the focus of today, but it will be in the image. So here we have that slice that I mentioned, starting at the, ma at the malleolar level. So medial malleolus, we see the um, posterior tibialis tendon, flexor digitorum longus, and then we're not going to focus on these other guys. They're not a part of the tendons, but here is the musculotendinous portion of your flexor hallucis longus right here. Um, we're going to work our way to long axis of each of these structures, and you can see the reference of that same axial slice or that same transverse slice down here. Uh, <clears throat> notice the, the angle the transducer should go. I don't want you to go 90 degrees to the skin here. I want, I want you to lean the probe. I want you to lean the probe handle towards the Achilles, and that will allow you this nice bony backboard of uh, reference. If you only take a 90 degree slice here, even though it looks like you're going to have a nice bony reference, because of the shape of the tibia, you're only going to catch part of the malleolus and the rest of the tendon will be floating out in soft tissue. So it's not much of a reference point of the, the bony acoustic landmarks in the area. If you just take a 90 degree slice from the skin down to the malleolus, I want you to lean the transducer more towards the Achilles and then fall off the malleolus posteriorly. And I'll elaborate that on the, uh, the live scan, but here's our relative transducer angle. Here's the tendon that we were talking about. Uh, deep to that, after this, um, this tendon jumps off the malleolus, this is part of that deltoid ligament complex. Now you're familiar with those soft tissues. It's not a mystery anymore of what we're seeing down here. And sometimes those layers are um, degenerated and have a, a more laminar look. And now you know you can move the ankle around and kind of see the differences between those and if they're an issue or not. But I have seen ligament old degeneration look like some sort of synovitis because it was anisotropic in some cases and, and not anisotropic in other slices. And it, and it looked like some proliferative sino, synovitis coming out of the tibio taylor joint. But what it really most likely is is the, the degenerated uh, ligament layers making things look like they're coming from the joint. All right, so distal to the malleolus. Now we're traversing towards the insertion. Um, the neck of the talus is a great landmark to follow this, but here's your tibialis posterior tendon in the shadow of the navicular is out here. But the dynamic maneuver is the way to go. If all this looks uh, ambiguous on the patient that you're scanning, not our patient today, it'll be very easy to see. Uh, but the patient you're scanning, if all these tissues are blending together because they have a very degenerative ankle and the tissues just don't look right, then you know we're using ultrasound. So we're going to make it move and I want you to do inversion of the foot and make that navicular move. So we'll do this in the live study, but you can see how the navicular um, pulls the posterior tibialis tendon here, and it's very fan-shaped. And it has a very anisotropic deep tissue characteristic here because a lot of these fibers hammock underneath the navicular, much like the spring uh, ligament would as well. So they fan shape around the navicular uh, I've heard it described as a snake eating an egg at this point right here where you can see all these fan-shaped fibers. But make the tissues move, and that'll be the best way to get around these tendons. Uh, next, immediately posterior to that, so go back up to your posterior tibialis tendon and then just translate the transducer exactly in parallel fashion posteriorly, and you'll catch the flexor digitorum longus, and then just wiggle the, the rest of the digits, the toes, uh, the, the smaller toes, to make this tendon isolate itself. Medial malleolus, talus is coming into the view. Let's go distally and see what happens after the medial malleolar level, because that's when I said all these tendons go their different directions. Again, wiggle the little toes, and we'll do that in a live study. But what looks like a bunch of weird synovitis and, and junk out here is really just those uh, transverse views of the deltoid ligament complex. And we don't want to call any of this fluid or any ratty tissue disruption until we dynamically take a look at the deltoids. Um, even more posterior in the same parallel fashion. So you can see now we're wrapping our transducer more posterior in the ankle in this axial slice. And you can see how far back we're going. We're leaning the transducer very much against the Achilles for this particular image. So if you want to get a really nice picture with a bony backboard of your uh, cortical um, landmarks of the posterior malleolus of the tibia, the talus, and the calcaneus all in one shot, and here's your subtalar joint, um, that's how you do it. You just lay the transducer towards the Achilles, 
and then refine your skeletal reference points first and then let's let's wiggle the big toe so we're just going to pull the big toe and you can see that distal musculotendinous junction just pull its way through its own tunnel there's an osteofibrous uh, tunnel just above the subtalar joint but here's your subtalar joint posteriorly here's the flexor hallucis longus and i'm just moving the big toe again hallucis means big toe and that cues us up for the live demo for the medial ankle tendons just give me a second while i fire up the studio and we'll do this live okay so we're back at the medial ankle we're going to start scanning for um, the tendons which is easier than doing the ligaments but we're working our way from the deep cortical structures and most of musculoskeletal ultrasound and we're going to work our way more superficially so i'm going to start on that medial malleolus again screen left is towards the medial malleolus very easy landmark to see and this is definitely something that is uh, easier to see on the 19 megahertz transducer as well but let's point out the anatomy in this wide field of view that we have so here's the tibialis posterior this oval it's the larger oval uh, it does have a neighbor here this is the flexor digitorum longus okay and then uh, they border each other they pretty much touch each other right there and then a little bit further back in the image we, we can see the neurovascular structures which we'll focus on here uh, momentarily but then we see this large muscle mass um, headed towards the Achilles. So all of this down here is the Kager's uh, fat complex. Here's the Achilles tendon itself. So you see that in the anatomy slides, right? So here's Achilles, here's Kager's, and then here's bordering that is our, our FHL, or flexor hallucis longus muscle belly, which, which travels much more distal. And let's follow that until it tapers to a, a close. Uh, so the musculotendinous portion was right here. Don't confuse this far distal muscle belly for a tenosynovitis. Um, for one, we can go long axis on that and see if it moves. So starting on that, uh, let's watch them all move real quick. So in long axis, we'll start on the medial malleolus and I don't see any tendons here. And then we're going to fall off of the long axis medial malleolus. We're going to fall off of that posteriorly. We're going to keep our probe parallel to the medial malleolus. So the first tendon we encounter superficially up here, this is the tibialis posterior. And distal to the malleolus is when the tendons start going their different directions. Uh, we talked a little bit about that in the anterior ankle exam, but the same thing applies for the medial and the lateral exam, is that once we are uh, proximal to the medial malleolus, we really don't have to move our transducer that much. But once we go distal to the medial malleolus, that's when they all head, uh, start heading their different directions to their insertions. But Let's scan this um, tibialis posterior here. If we wanted to move it, that'd be inversion. Getting the navicular to move, basically. So you can see the, ten the, the tendon on the far right side of the screen tenting up as it, as it is less taut. All right. So um, now I'm going to fall posterior to the tibialis posterior tendon, just immediately posterior to that. There's another tendon right here and just to double check our work that this is the flexor digitorum longus which we know goes to the digits I'm just gonna wiggle passively the toes so I'm just gonna go start on uh, the second toe third fourth fifth and just make sure that's the the tendon group that we're uh, looking for here so landmarks underneath that are the tibia uh, talus we start to see a little bit of the shadow of the calcaneus coming into view um, now posterior to that running parallel neurovascular structures are going to come into play that's fine but let's go find that sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus so this is your posterior um, subtalar joint to the calcaneus and that tells me that we're almost there to see the FHL in, in motion here. So let's get a long axis FHL and you can see the joint. Here's your posterior subtalar joint right here, uh, which does in some com uh, cases communicate with the tendon sheath of the FHL. So you can have a joint effusion um, outwardly pour its fluid into this tendon sheath in some cases. So keep that in mind and let's watch this tendon. I'm going to move the big toe just passively. So flexor hallucis longus, um, I don't know that I mentioned it in the slides, but hallucis means big toe. Very easy to see it move, but you can see that distal musculotendinous portion try to pull its way down into its own little tunnel. And you just don't want to call that tenosynovitis. You don't want to call it a joint effusion. 
if you're holding real still um, and on a lesser quality ultrasound machine, it may appear that this is all fluid and not muscle. See if that fluid moves with the with the big toe tendon, right? And if that does move with the tendon, then it's probably just the distal musculotendinous portion. All right. So what happens after the malleolar level? Let's go. Let's go chase those down. I'm going to move all my gel heap around um, after the medial malleolus. Okay. The tibialis posterior looks, it's, it really looks the, the most complete here. So we see this very broad tendon uh, take a fan shape um, grab at the, at the navicular. So it doesn't just attach to the navicular, it envelops the navicular. And here we can see a couple branches of that tendon. Uh, the deeper branches are going to go underneath the navicular and head, on, head all the way over to the um, undersurface of the medial most cuneiform. And then the, these medial fibers, they're going to wrap around kind of like a snake um, eating an egg around the navicular. So this is navicular. Here's the talus. And I can just cause a little bit of motion to that tendon. can loosen the tendon passively and see if any fluid uh, bunches up into those, those tendinous uh, fibers. Uh, but that's one way to do a dynamic exam is just to lift the navicular with the with the with the first metatarsal basically. So that's let's go. That's a long axis. I'm going to go short axis there, um, starting at the navicular. So this is all navicular, and here's the undersurface of the navicular where we catch the the majority of that tibialis posterior tendon. So tibialis posterior tendon is this big oval here. This is the undersurface of the navicular. So when I see a big cartilage interface like this, that's talus, and then this is spring ligament right here, and then this is the tibialis posterior tendon and cross-section. So uh, just to check our work there, we're just going to creep up towards the medial malleolus in little one centimeter increments. We're just going to walk back, forth, back, forth, and we're going to watch this tendon as it ovals out and it's um, resting on top of the ligament complex that we just scanned, like a hammock. We're just going to keep following it, keep following it, keep following it. There we are, back at the medial malleolus. And then its neighbor was the flexor digitorum longus. I apologize, I did flip the probe. Bad habit. So we'll go back down just to check our work again and follow it to the... We already did the hard part, right? And that was the ligaments underneath it. So here's the uh, navicular. And then we can see the tibialis posterior here. And it, you see two ovals here, right here, here, and here. Uh, one of those is spring ligament, which is over here. And then here was that tibialis posterior. So following that, following that, here we go. All right, and what just came on top of the sustenaculum talli right there? That's not the nerve, that's the flexor digitorum longus, just moving, which is neat because you can also see quadratus plantae down here moving with the tendons because it's just leaving the, the medial aspect of the calcaneus. Okay. Um, back up to the navicular, so, or sorry, medial malleolus. So medial malleolus, flexor digitorum longus, let's focus on that one. Flexor digitorum longus goes on top of that sustenaculum talli. You can use, if you lose it, we can use the anisotropic artifact to our advantage. Right there. So here it is cut at 90 degrees. Here it is with the anisotropy. We'll go distal and just follow that shadow right here. And this is probably far enough if you're not anticipating pathology distal to the knot of Henry, which we'll talk about right now. So back up to the sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus. So sustenaculum talli right there. Looks like another medium malleolus. Here's the FHL posteriorly to it. So I'm just going to passively wiggle the big toe and check my work. And we're going to follow that wiggling FHL as it meets up with the FDL, flexor digitorum longus, and here they become neighbors and they're touching right there. And right here where we see the FHL try to pass under the FDL, this, this landmark, this area right here where they, it's like if you crossed your fingers, like I'm doing here in the video, that little landmark is called the knot of Henry. And that's another area to look for an abrasive pathology where these, these two tendons can rub on each other and cause a lot, of, a lot of pain in the arch of the foot. 
and that's right here. It kind of looks like a yin yang sign when you cut it at the right angle. So you can see those two tendons use anisotropic artifact to your advantage. If you want to isolate these two tendons also just passively move the toes. So little toes and then the big toe. But that's the knot of Henry. If there's any reason to go distal to that, just keep following each one of those individually. But it's very rare that we need to follow the FHL um, distally, for example. It's very rare that we need to follow the FDL to its um, in thesis all the way at the, uh, the digits. So knot of Henry is typically a spot where we stop scanning for those tendons. But that, that about covers the tendons. Uh, we don't see the tendon sheaths very well unless there's pathology, except for around the tibialis posterior. So I'll switch over to the 19 megahertz transducer and we'll show you the tendon sheath. of the uh, tibialis posterior. So here's tibialis posterior, bring up my depth, grab my arrow back, much higher resolution. We can actually see the flexor retinaculum, which will be covered in the tarsal tunnel, but flexor retinaculum, uh, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, neurovascular structures, which we'll chase down later. And then here's the FHL, just posterior to that sustenaculum tali of the calcaneus. I flipped my orientation again. Sorry about that. So tibialis posterior, FDL, and then you can see that really, really nice FHL. And then let's go look at the tendon sheath of the PTT right there. You can see a normal synovial slip right there, that little anechoic area. And if I grab the big toe and metatarsal and, and invert the foot a little bit, it will typically cause a pooling of fluid around the tibialis posterior if you just wanted to see that tendon sheath. But right there in that corner, that's normal. Don't call it abnormal unless it envelops the tendon. So I would see circumferentially, I would see fluid all the way around the tendon if there was something wrong with it. And then let's just take a look at these ligaments while we're here um, with the 19 megahertz since we didn't do that last. So here was that posterior uh, tibio tailor portion. We're going to dorsiflex the foot and look at those ligaments really nice. Very, very high res. I mean, we're seeing so many fibers, this broad area right here, all the way down to the talus at this point. Now let's move on over to tibiocalcaneal. So we need to see that sustenaculum talli, which is here. A little smaller field of view. So seeing the broad uh, ligament all in one shot is not going to happen. So it's really important that you keep a bone in view. So here, immediately here's the malleolus, superficial layer deep layer you just kind of keep that in your mind the deep layer is going to the tail of superficial layers for the most part all go into the calcaneus or the tibial spring and uh here's that tibial spring complex underneath the ptt so here's the ptt that we just looked at the posterior tibialis tendon and here's that tibial spring portion just underneath it all right so great advantages to using a 19 megahertz transducer, far more detail. Uh, the frame rates are actually a little bit more live. So if you're looking at popping, clicking, snapping, uh, this transducer catches those in real time. Very, very nice. And procedurally, it's a lot less transducer in your way when it comes to doing injections around the foot and ankle. So this, this probe is very nice. Long axis to short axis scanning. As you can see, I'm not having to move very much. For example, to do a long axis and short axis scan of my Flexor digitorum longus is just moving the fingers and not your whole hand as in a, a hockey stick. But that takes care of the tendons. We'll go back to the talk, um, introduce our tarsal tunnel, and then come back to the live scan. All right, so to the tarsal tunnel now, we'll skate through these because all the imaging planes have already been covered and it's pretty quick to show you the neurovascular structures. So first thing we're gonna focus on is uh, this guy, the elephant in the room, the tibial nerve. And the tibial nerve branches off and it has a medial and lateral calcaneal branch at the level of the tarsal tunnel where it bifurcates is, is pretty variable. So you wanna start scanning these pretty high and look for those little bifurcations or they can get away from you. Uh, and then posteriorly, you will see a guy uh, skate over towards the calcaneal neck and that's the calcaneal branch. 
um, our roadmap for all nerves is going to be arteries. So if you can't find the nerve, come on up more proximally again and look at the artery first as your roadmap. Veins will follow. Chances are if you're scanning anything in this area, you're applying a fair amount of pressure uh, because of that big air gap that shows up when we scan the medial ankle. So your pressure will probably collapse the veins. So be aware that we need to add a, a significant gel heap here to, to show that we're not collapsing things like a big joint effusion, tenosynovitis of the flexor hallucis longus, for example, is very common in the tarsal tunnel as a choking point here. Um, so the veins can be a good marker of how much transducer pressure you're applying. If you're evaluating somebody else's ultrasound images, look and see if you can find patent veins. And if you don't see veins in the shot, chances are they're applying too much probe pressure. Uh, then lastly, we have this flexor retinaculum from the tibia to the calcaneus, and that's our uh, proper tarsal tunnel. But it's all these other factors like the tendons, the joints that can have ganglion cysts, space occupying masses like loose bony fragments can, can occur in these areas. So if you're not seeing nerve diameter changes, uh, one thing to look for are um, ossifications in the ankle, old scar tissue that is calcified and cling itself to the nerve uh, against the flexor hallucis longus tendon, for example, or flexor digitorum. Rarely, I, I don't see the nerve branches resting up against flexor digitorum necessarily as much as I do flexor hallucis longus. Um, but right here at that, that retinaculum is the typical choking point. To get a really nice image of the anatomy, you start more proximal, so you're only going to catch a little bit of retinaculum uh, at first. So if we're up high on the tarsal tunnel at the inlet, uh, we'll see a really nice flexor retinaculum first, but it'll taper off to nothing uh, because we're really obliquely slicing the retinaculum. But it does give us a nice starting point for our tarsal tunnel here. So uh, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and now we can talk about the neurovascular structures like the little arteries and uh, the nerves. At this point, it's still laying as one nerve, but I will say that those, those branches are ready to start splitting. So we'll move the transducer distally into the proper uh, tarsal tunnel and the anatomy and the landscape and everything starts to change. So it's not just tibia anymore. Uh, you're going to see a lot of talus after you leave the, the tibia and you rest the transducer off the neck of the calcaneus. Um, you're going to see a lot more bony acoustic landmarks be more pronounced right here like the sustenaculum talli. It's a huge landmark. We need to wiggle the FHL, move the big toe, and show where you are. But this looks a lot like a medial malleolus. Um, and, and you don't want to call that a medial malleolus because we have a lot more tissue up here. And just to give you some closure on what else is happening over here, uh, we have the superficial deltoid uh, ligament at the sustenaculum talli area. We know at the talus area, this far posterior, these are cross sections most likely of our uh, posterior deep tibio talar ligament complex. So there's a deep and superficial inserting somewhere over here. But um, superficial to that, we have a um, tibio calcaneal ligament that was the big guy and then we have the um, posterior tibialis tendon superficial to that flexor digitorum longus superficial to the sustenaculum talli of the calcaneus and that 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 landmark acts as this pivot point for the fhl to wrap around and make this turn with this bony acoustic um, backboard uh, to provide that leverage that it takes to turn a corner so it has its own tunnel and you'll see uh, another little fascial osteofibrous tunnel for the FHL to rest in. And then back here even further, you'll see a muscle that's starting on the medial neck of the calcaneus, which we brushed on briefly on the plantar fascia portion of the last webinar. But that is our quadratus plantae muscle origin on the medial neck of the calcaneus there. All those little soft tissues that are there, we're really just focusing on what's happening with the FHL and the space that is created by this wedge underneath the flexor retinaculum above the FHL and uh, kind of posterior to the sustenaculum talli, the calcaneus. So we're just going to swing the probe from proximal to distal. We're going to uh, wiggle the big toe so you can see that shadow right up against the neck of that sustenaculum talli and start moving the big toe. And we'll do that in a live scan. It'll look um, much like this because it's the same model. And then all this soft tissue out here, this is the muscle we discussed over here, the quadratus plantae along with the neurovascular structures. Again, I don't have a color Doppler shot on this, but we'll do it in the live in the live study. And then we already went over the soft tissues over here. You can see that now that you know what ligaments look like in the ankle, you know that's not tibialis posterior right here. You know this is tibialis posterior. 
you know, horizontal acting like a sling underneath that is one of your deltoid ligaments. And so um, it's nice to have that confidence of what's enveloping the joint before we hit our tendons when you're evaluating the ankle. Um, let's move over to the live demo. And after the live demo will be our time for live Q&A. So have your questions ready. As we do the live demo, start getting those um, typed up into the chat portal of the, the question and answer portal on Zoom. But let's switch over to the live scan and get going. All right, so we'll get back onto the 15 to 4 megahertz transducer into the tarsal tunnel. Uh, screen left would be the malleolar side again. So I'll get my arrow back up here. And let's just start with the easy structures to see, which are the arteries and the veins superficially. We're going to throw on the color and see what that blood flow is doing. If you're not seeing these little veins fill, um, you're either pressing down too much and you're just seeing an artery. Your color flow settings could not be set for sensitive enough, or you just need to augment uh, the tissue distal to the vein. So you can see I'm just pushing down distal and just working the blood flow up uh, proximally as those veins drain back up towards our heart. And you, you can do that with the ultrasound. So if you're ever in doubt with the structures that we're scanning, just throw the color on and use it as a roadmap. But as you see me working proximally, this posterior tibial artery will follow the tibial nerve until it branches into three parts. So we should see the calcaneal branch kick off first and head posteriorly. And we can see the uh, medial and lateral plantar nerves jump off of it here. So following that uh, distally to the sustenaculum talli, that's where we see the two divisions of the nerve for the medial and lateral plantar very nicely. And then we'll switch over to the 19 megahertz and really get a good evaluation on these. But um, what's nice about the larger field of view is I can see the, the medial, lateral, and I thought I had the calcaneal portion in here, but I but I lost it, but we're gonna focus on these two here um, at the 19 megahertz exam. So switching over to 19. Back up to the malleolus, and you can see that we're gonna get a lot more definition, a lot more nerve uh, detail with the 19 megahertz transducer. I'm gonna bring my depth up more shallow. And now let's follow these fast and see if there's anything inside the nerves that we notice uh, could be contributing to any issues. So I look for nerve swelling, I look for space occupying masses, calcium deposits, old um, bony fragments in the tarsal tunnel, but especially here the FHL level where the sustenaculum talli, the calcaneus is with the FHL, this little tunnel here is where we see a big effusion will collect and push into the um, nerves at this level of the tarsal tunnel. So tarsal tunnel level is defined at the level of the flexor retinaculum, which is this guy superficially. Let's follow it over. So here's flexor digitorum longus. Here's the posterior tibial tendon. And then here I can see the flexor retinaculum originate on the medial malleolus, this, this triangular dark wedge. That's our flexor digitorum longus, or sorry, that's our uh, flexor retinaculum. And we're gonna we're gonna follow that distally towards the neck of the calcaneus, and and just kind of delineate where the, our where our tarsal tunnel is. So we can see that little thin thin line. It helps to move dynamically, but we can see that thin line of the flexor uh, retinaculum. I'm gonna keep my finger down on the calcaneus. There we go. So calcaneus. Here we are, and. Here's that flexor retinaculum diving down to just about to the tubercle level of the calcaneus, but uh, just deep to that is our quadratus plantae muscle down here. And you can see these fibers climbing about that level of its origin, I would say. And here we can see the calcaneal branch already starting to kick away, and then we still have the medial and lateral plantar nerves. Let's go down in depth a little bit, turn our gain up a little bit, and follow, keep following the nerves. But that was, I mean, that's the majority of the tarsal tunnel scanning. I'm looking for space occupying masses. I'm looking for FHL, tenosynovitis, ganglion cysts, uh, anything that's gonna compress on the nerve as it, as it traverses that, that narrow entrance to the tarsal tunnel, um, and making sure that the nerves look uniform um, that I, I don't have any swollen fascicles, 
or schwannomas. Throw the color on if you suspect anything else could be in the area. But that is pretty much the parameters. You can go long axis on this, but there's not a lot of correlation in seeing issues with the nerve and long axis here at this level because that, that tunnel's so broad, there's a lot of room for the nerve to move anyways. Um, but long axis can help you correlate a long and short axis for uh, diagnosis. If you're guiding procedures in this area, say to a posterior subtalar joint, which will be covered in a future lecture, um, it helps to have what's called a color compare tool on. So we can throw our color on and hit either the top bottom here, and we could be doing our procedure from the posterior aspect here, for example. And we could be running a needle underneath the vessels and underneath the um, underneath all the, the scary structures into that posterior subtalar joint while simultaneously having color on. So we would see the, the procedure showing up at the bottom while we're still live. We can still see the artery, we can still see the veins and not interrupt our procedure with all that flash artifact from a needle. So just one thing to consider when you're doing procedures as um, all the tools in your toolbox. Color compare is a really good one. You can also go side by side. Side by side cuts off the sides of the transducer to center the image and I think it can look a little bit confusing like that's all one image. So uh, top bottom is my favorite. So that does it for the tarsal tunnel. We're not going to take any measurements here because there's no standard. There are some articles out there, but there's no real um, real standard out there that everybody follows like the carpal tunnel. It's just good to look at the nerves, see what might be occluding them, any space occupying masses, any nerve diameter changes, um, all those things that we look for in the other nerve entrapment pathologies, but here there's no standard for you know how big is the medial calcaneal, or sorry, the medial plantar, how, how big should the lateral plantar, how big should the um, calcaneal branch be. There, there's no standard on that like we have in the carpal tunnel. So it's, it's all relative scanning, checking with the other side is good practice, but for the most part that's, that's it for the tarsal tunnel. Um, I do thank you all for joining us here today. That does conclude the webinar's recorded portion. We'll, we'll move over to a Q&A at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like Daniel said, uh, we're taking questions now, so you can go ahead and put those in the Q&A box either at the bottom or the side of your screen there. And uh, yeah, the next uh, final part is on Tuesday, October 11th, and that is uh, using ultrasound to evaluate the lateral ankle. And uh, for information on that and to sign up for that, you can visit our webinars page uh, from the Sonosite website at uh, secure.sonosite.com slash behind the scan webinar. Thanks, Chris. We'll give it just a few seconds and see if those questions come rolling in. Uh, sometimes we get questions, they're not recorded. So just know that your question will not be a part of the recording. So don't feel shy, like you can't ask anything. We're not gonna repeat it on the recording. But- uh, Yep, I don't, I don't see anything coming through at the moment. All right. Yep. Uh, so uh, let me uh, thank you, Daniel, for taking the time to put together this incredible presentation for this webinar. Uh, just a ton of excellent information here. Um, so everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And like I said, uh, Tuesday, October 11th is using ultrasound to evaluate the lateral ankle. And hopefully we'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining.